Hi, my name is Sue Schmidt. I'm the Nanslo CHEO Project Coordinator for WICHI. And today we are very honored to have Robbie Melton present to us. So I'm going to forward to the slide that is about her bio. Um, Robbie is a phenomenal um, te technologist. She's done great work in many different areas in publicizing and, and reviewing and showing people all kinds of apps and mobile devices that can be used in the educational space. So we are very pleased that Robbie has agreed to do this webinar for us today. The last thing that I do want to mention is that this webinar has been funded by the U.S. Department of Labor via a TAA CCCT grant. So please note that um, it was funded by them and this is a disclaimer and we do very much appreciate that they have funded this webinar for us. So Robbie, I'm going to advance to the next slide and I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, hello, everyone. Um, again, my name is Robbie Melton, and you know my motto is, life is good. Boy, do I have some exciting things to share with you. Again, let me give you a little background and a little warm-up. I'm considered one of those educators like Spock on Star Trek. I boldly go where no educator has gone before and that's behind the scenes of all of this emerging technology. Look at all of your mobile devices, smart gadgets, tools. And today, we're going to look at some amazing technology and innovation and some that you'll sit back and go, I'm not sure, Robbie, about that one. So again, let me give you my Disclaimer. Again, on behalf of education and workforce development, I go out and look at the emerging technology coming forth. Um, how about right now? And my goal is to look at this technology, share it with my higher ed colleagues around the world so that we can step up and say, hmm, let us look at the quality standards, the safety, the IT, teaching, learning, training functions of all of this emerging technology to determine the value. So everyone, I want you to buckle up because I have some smart gadgets coming in that you'll go, oh my gosh. And again, I have all of your references and research for you, so let's rock and roll. So as we go through, I just want to give you my outline. And again, we're going to look at the impact of mobile technology in healthcare, including smartphones, tablets, mobile apps. Then we're going to dive right into emerging smart health tools and gadgets. That's all of your fitness and wearables, your Google Glasses. We will also address standard of quality and safety for emerging technology. And again, boy, do I have a resource center waiting for you all online. Um, I have over 300 um, allied and what we call your STEM apps for all of your devices. And yes, we'll have questions and feedback. So again, I will take you through the journey of upcoming smart gadgets for allied health. So as we start into it, again, what you need to do for this presentation is to pull out your mobile devices. That's your smartphones, your tablets, or your computer, because I will give you resources. And with that, let's start with our mobile health app and gadgets and mobile devices. So, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing as we address with all of these smart tools or maybe toys is to determine the educational, medical, and what we call safety values. So with that, 
I have information regarding the growing number of these gadgets, and you know that too because some of you right here online currently wearing maybe a Fitbit or maybe you have a, uh, how about some shoes that will help you in determining your health? Yes, I'm going to present to you smart shoes. So with that, this is just a little example of all of the type of devices that we're currently evaluating. And yes, we align all of our research and evaluations with FDA, um, OSHA, on and on, because we're talking about medical devices that could make or break you. So with that, I want you to know that we also use the Gardner Hype Scale for Emerging Technology. And you'll see where we even have one for your digital health type cycle. And there you will see your um, Fitbit and all of your pack sensors and your medical tricorders on and on. Well, let's get ready to let you all know right now, unfortunately, we all have these devices. We wear them, we eat with them, we sleep with them, and yes, we have research to say we mate with them, yeah, and date with them. However, if you notice at the bottom, even now, we only use basically now from 5 to 10% of these devices as effective educational tools. And you see the number one um, function, playing games. So if you are stuck on Candy Crush or if you are trying to play Minecraft, just give me a few minutes because I will address gamification. So. Here's how your students will come to you with their device in the back pocket. And again, on behalf of the Tennessee Board of Regents, we are going to be proactive with these devices and learn to use them as effective tools. So as we go through, again, we're looking at possibilities. Now, when I start the presentation and share with you some of the emerging tech, I need for you to think of the possibilities because many of these items started out to be just for entertainment. So as we start with our devices, you will see we're currently evaluating using your phone. Yes, your phone as telescope, microscope, heart monitor, blood pressure, even down to musical instruments. And as we enter, we're going to talk about using mobile apps within your classroom or as tools and how we have a three-tier system for mobile apps. And then, yes, oh, the innovation. Wait till you see what's coming. So with that, let's start off, everyone. How about iDoctor on your phone? Yes. Right now across the nation, you have many applications that will allow you to use your phone as an iDoctor. So with that, I'm going to take you into what we call now, how about that smart stethoscope? Would you ever think a smart stethoscope and what can it do? Well, you see, it's connected, number one, to your phone, and it allows you not only to use it in the traditional way, but you're going to hear something about the cloud. Oh, yes, the cloud that's covering all of us, that's storing all of our data, which allows us at any time any place and on demand to grab information or live information as you are using the various devices so that you can have what we call real-time data. And with the eye um, stethoscope, you also have mobile apps that you can also use what we call 
on time or to share with us what's going on. Here is a mobile app called Health Map that's free. And what will this app allow you to do? Well, wherever you go, wherever you travel, all you have to do is tap on that app and it will give you in a 50 mile radius all of the contagious diseases that have been reported to the CDC, et cetera, et cetera. One more time. Let's say you are in Michigan and you tap on that app and within a 50 mile radius, it will pull up what's happening in terms of contagious diseases. And again, this is a free app coming in on your iOS devices. And of course, I have a list of all of these apps for you. I also want you to take a look at some emerging technology in which you are able to take your phone and add third-party accessories, such as this lens. Again, this is to help with diagnosing eye diseases. And you might say, well, Robin, I mean, <laughs> does it work? Well, this is the reason why we are coordinating pilots across not just the nation, the world, to get feedback on the accuracy, the validity, et cetera. Over in Africa right now, they're using the Samsung um, phones and your iPhone 5S as part of the pilot of Peak, um, the Peak Project in which you are able to use your phone to diagnose eye diseases. Please know that over 285 million people worldwide are visually impaired, and in rural areas and countries, this type of technology that allows you to use your phone that you're playing Candy Crush with can help diagnose eye diseases as well as provide what we call real-time data back so you can have a physician on hand as you're taking um, or demonstrating what you're doing with your devices or your treatments. Oh, here's one, everyone, that we have been testing now for three years. This is your blood pressure. And as you see, this is an older slide because you see where the phone is basically connected by cables to the device. Those days are over. We now have where you just put the blood pressure cuff on your arm without any wires or connection. Why? Because you're using Bluetooth and you're using the cloud. And again, you're able to take your phone, your mobile phone, and operate the blood pressure cuff where, yes, it will pump up, it will take the blood pressure and send you real-time information. Now, I have to share with you all this story about the blood pressure. As you know, in my house, I have all of these smart tools, gadgets, robots. It's like the Pee Wee Playhouse of technology. Well, my husband, who, of course, has high blood pressure, said to me, oh, wow, are you sure this is going to work? This looks a little junkish to me. That's his word for it. Well, we put our blood pressure on, and on behalf of the um, nursing programs in Tennessee, we had been piloting this. So when he put it on and his blood pressure was 120 over 130, he said to me, I told you this was junk. And I said to me, hmm, I'm so glad that um, we're married because I think you need to call the doctor. I'm here to share with you, on behalf of my husband, that device saved his life because he was at a stroke level and we were able to detect that. So again, I'm here to share with you not to promote or say this is what you must have, I'm saying that there are devices coming to us that we need to monitor, we need to pilot, and we need to look at best uses. So with that, 
I have new devices coming up. These are your now um, emerging telescopes, and you see it just goes straight on your device. And you have a new one coming called the cardio sleeve, which again now brings your stethoscope to a higher level. Moving on, we also have a device that when I present this, people just go, oh, my goodness, no. And I'm here to say to you, oh, my goodness, yes. The FDA approved the Mobilis US, and it is the first ultrasound imaging system to work on a smartphone. Okay, everyone look closely. One more time. It is the first ultrasound, ultrasound imaging system to work on smartphones. Wow, um, we need to have some questions about that. And again, you see it could be used for a slew of uh, various functions, including tracking pregnancies, kidney disorder, on and on. So again, this is not to replace what we currently have. This is a new tool emerging in terms of technology. Moving on with emerging tech, I'm pleased to share with you various new features in terms of your bio stamp. Oh, yes. You'll be able to wear a stamp basically made of flexible electronic circuits that sticks directly to your skin. And again, you'll be able to use your cell phone, smartphone, tablet, and record what's going on, and to even send back and forth information. And again, that's called your bio stamp. And of course, your dermal screen cancer screening app and device. Yes, you see it here, everyone. The dermal screen can detect skin cancer 85% of the time. Now, that is amazing. You see at the at the bottom the lens is five hundred dollars. However, we do know there are numerous advances coming to drop that cost, but I have to stop you all again and say it one more time. You're going to use your cell phone, your smartphone, and you'll be able to detect skin cancer eighty five percent of the time. Some of you should be going, oh my gosh, but let me share with you something that I just heard of. How about today? They are working on an app and a lens whereby you will use that to detect what we call some of the first stages of breast cancer. Okay, everyone, take a deep breath one more time. They're working on right now where you can use your smartphone that you can just put over your breast to detect breast cancer. You don't think that that would have an impact? You should be going, oh, my gosh. So with that, let me move you on. How about finding veins? Do you remember the days of yesteryear when you had to go to the hospital and they had to draw blood and they had to hit that arm and tie it up to look for that vein, not anymore, because you have vein finders. Look at this technology. You'll be able to hold your cell phone or device right over your skin to let them know which vein is open and watch as you put or inject in that vein, etc. So with that, we also now have, and this is right now, everyone, Resound hearing aid and app. For those in need of hearing aids, and think of your deaf students on and on, you'll be able to do all of that with your phone. Yes, your smartphone. And let's talk about 3D printing. 3D printing is a game changer in the field of medicine and education. What you currently see on the screen, your 3D bioprinting. Yes, you'll be able to print human body parts. I had a uh, reference of a video, 
and maybe some of you have reviewed this video where the doctor is using a 3D printer to make an ear. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the what I call major game changers in the area of allied health education, and it's all your 3D printing. So again, you'll be able to scan and print um, various body limbs, and they are using live um, cells, by the way, for some of the body parts. So this just gives you uh, just a little glance of what's happening. And with these 3D printing, guess what? The printer can sit on your desk. So we're not talking about a room with a huge printer. With 3D printing, some of the printers are mobile enough where you can put on a desk. Moving on, here's some new innovation, I swim band. Again, this is a wearable app accessory which will alert your Bluetooth phone if a swimmer has been underwater. Now, this is where I have a little problem. So time out, everyone. This is Robbie's hang-up. I don't want it to be where you can put a device, an app, or a tattoo on someone and think that you don't have to monitor them or watch them. So some of these emerging tech devices coming out, I still have what I call the caution sign because sometimes uh, um, you need to be there with or without the technology, and this is in one. So let's move with our Google Glasses. Oh, we heard a lot about Google Glasses, and yes, I do have them. Amazing technology. And yes, as of last week, Google stopped the production of the Google Glasses because they're moving into another level of them, and that is what? Oh, yes. How about your Google Contacts? Ah, and you might say, oh, no. And I say, what are the possibilities? Well, this tiny, flexible um, contact lens offer hopes for those who are diabetic. Instead of having to pick or stick your finger, you will have your contacts to read the glucose level in the tears. So again, where on one hand you see, oh, I'm not sure about the technology. On another hand, if you look at the possibilities, you go, wow, this could be a major game changer, especially for those who are diabetic. So moving on, I want to get into some of the wearable tech. Ah, we will be tech down. I know that you can't see me. But right now, I have on my tech clothes. And you probably will go, what are you talking about, Robbie? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have not only tech clothes, but I'm censored. And not only am I censored, you're going to hear a theme called the Internet of Things. That's a new phrase to indicate that we're all going to be tech down by sensors and microcontrollers, devices. So let me just share with you a couple of things. Well, check out this slide. Already, many of us are connected. Yes, I do have jewelry. I have shoes. I have clothes that are already censored and connected. And what will this do? It will give all of us what we call real-time data and to help us to make informed decisions based on real-time data. So with that, you see uh, a little um, diagram here where the person is censored or teched up and how it feeds into a database, and then that information is then analyzed and evaluated by the healthcare to help in monitoring and managing your health. So with that, I want to share with you the next level of all of your wearables. We're going to have wearable devices, accessories, and of course, how about furniture? Did you ever think there would be a smart bed that will track 
you and what you do and senses. But yes, we not only have your smart bed, but we have a smart hospital bed. And again, we have a couple of places around the nation testing out these emerging technology, and the bed will then help you in terms of giving you vital signs and what's going on, et cetera. So moving from a smart bed, I knew you would like this one. How about that smart toilet? Oh, yes. You'll have smart toilets in which you will use to help diagnose um, what goes in, um, urine, et cetera, et cetera. But this little device right here that a couple of places are currently testing the out, you see, are even hooked up via Wi-Fi. So again, not only could you have your smart bed, you have your smart toilet coming, which moves us into what I love. How about those smart shoes? Well, this is the time that we all take that deep breath and say, why? Why smart shoes? Well, let me share with you again. A lot of this technology coming out, really not geared or designed for education or for the health care, basically for entertainment, or gaming, et cetera. This is where I would want to just grab educators and say, wake up, come on. Let's look at the possibility. Here you have these smart shoes. And the first thing you might think, wow, if you click your heels three times, you'll go back to Kansas. No, I want it to be where if the technology is there with this type of shoe, what are the possibilities in your program area? So let's say that you're into um, physical therapy. Wouldn't it be nice that your patients, your clients, can put on those shoes and as that person is learning to walk or you're able to pick up real-time information on how that client is walking, when that client is walking, that would help you to determine the best treatment? This is why we're looking at all of these smart devices and all of this technology, because we as educators and healthcare workers can look at other possibilities for utilizing all of these smart tools and gadgets. So here is something that I'm waiting on. I should receive this in May. Why? Because I'm always on a diet. And what is Goldie? Well, it's the first and they say only wearable device that will automatically measure the calories you consume and burn through your skin. Hmm. So I said to the developer, if I eat that large slice of chocolate cake, it will let me know the calories. And he said, yes. Uh-huh, so I eat it, and it show up on that band, hmm, 385 calories, yes. And then the developer said, it will also let you know how many calories you are also burning. And I went, really? And again, this is why I'm waking you all up, because something like this can make or break people in terms of their health. We must make sure that these devices, these smart gadgets are safe, accurate, and providing us the information. So when he told me that one slice of cake would take me 2.5 hours of aerobics in a gym to burn off, I went, okay, hmm, life is not good. But again, with these smart devices, it will only help if used in the correct way at the correct time to help us manage our health. So again, you got Goldie coming, and you also have your smart shirt. Oh, I love these smart shirts. Um, here is a shirt, and as you see, uh, not only will it give you your vital signs, we also have it with some type of technology whereby if you drop, um, 
some mustard on your shirt. You have a beautiful white shirt or blouse, and let's say you eating a hot dog, and oh my God, you have mustard on your blouse. Well, these shirts coming up and blouses, all you would have to say is clean me. And that command will then start to activate something in the fibers that will automatically start cleaning the mustard off. Again, everyone, these are emerging technology items coming. We are here to evaluate them, but I just wanted to give you just a little heads up about your new line of clothing. And of course, you have your Fitbit. Oh my gosh, everyone has a Fitbit. Oh, everyone has jaw bones. Everyone is decked out with the latest and greatest uh, meters and whatever. And now we're having what we call the next level of those devices coming in, and it's all of your now armbands. We even have socks. Yes, socks that you will wear that will provide sensors. And I have a tattoo that I can put on. I also have rings, watches, earrings, yes, earrings. And up and coming, please do not laugh, but I was able to see this. How about fake eyelashes? Eyelashes. Wow. So again, we have all of these wearable technologies coming out, which moves us now into mobile apps. You have apps for all of your phones, for eye medicine, your medicine. I have some apps for you. So with that, just want to share with you in the uh, medical category, the usage for apps. And look at the consumer. That's your green. 33.38% are using mobile apps. This is kind of scary because I'm sure many of those consumers are just looking and at the marketing of these, thinking, oh, this will be a great app, and this will be able to improve my health, track my health. And we really don't have what we call good feedback research regarding the claims. So I caution everybody, please, like with any new item, whether it's tech or non-tech, you have to be very careful of the claims that these apps and devices are making. So with that, let me share with you, we have some apps coming up where you'll be able to take your phone and you'll be able to use it to look at x-rays. Now, you'll see that upper photo is where you can use your phone to look right at your bone structure. That one is false, and that's why I put that up there, because that one is what I call a gimmick, um, an entertaining app, and one that right now they're asking you to pay $3 for. So I say to people, be very careful of all of these new apps coming out saying what they can or will do for you. Moving on, I want to take you to my next set of um, emerging texts, and I'm going to just click back one time. And again, you're going to have mobile devices even on your pill boxes, on all of your, uh, how about your Band-Aids? You'll be able to take a Band-Aid, you remember the little cute Band-Aid? and they will have sensors in it. It will let your um, health care provider know uh, if that wound is healing, um, any type of infection, um, and when it needs to be changed. So again, on behalf of the FDA mobile app guidelines, which I have those for you, when we see various devices come out or we look at and test out various apps, we do contact um, the FDA and other agencies if we think this app is going to be harmful 
or they really need to investigate this device uh, ASAP. I'll give you a story that you will remember. There was an app called Head Coupling that came out a year and a half ago. And this device app that had a little contraption that you would put on your smartphone will shoot various lights in your eyes at a rapid pace. Well, it caused seizures in various people across the nation. And we were able to call in to say, you know, there should be a warning on this app. Because again, these apps are not rated. And they just come to us without any warning or what I call um, be aware. So again, I'm taking you through some of the mobile apps, but I do have um, for you 75 FDA-approved regulated mobile apps for you, and that's in your resource center. Oh, yes, do I have a resource center for you. So with that, I want to take you through some of what I call our top apps that you're able to download today free. And I think I pulled that slide out, but it's called Prognosis. And I'm going to go online so that you can pull that app. And Prognosis is a problem-based medical app that's amazing. It will take you through various scenarios. It's hooked up to your social media that you have just for your class. But I'll demonstrate that in a few minutes. But I want to just move forward with the mobile app to say that, yes, we are evaluating all of these devices for teaching and learning. So at this time, as I indicated, you need to take out your mobile devices because I'm going to try something on this webinar that I have not tried before. And that is to demonstrate to you a new tool that we are using to demonstrate how you as an instructor can take your mobile device and have your students to take out their device regardless if it's a laptop, a smartphone, or a tablet. And you can then share your content with them on their devices. Let me share with one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try something exciting, something brand new. I'm going to have you to go to this website. And you are going to, I'm going to give you a code. And you are going to put in that code. And I'm going to show you what I can do. So those who are still with me, it's called Nearpod, www.nearpod.com. You're going to go on your mobile device, whether it's your smartphone, your laptop, or your tablet. You will go to that URL, and you will see Join Session. You don't have to download anything. This is a free tool, but this will demonstrate how I'm able to actually use some of this technology as a teaching and learning tool. And when you get to that URL, you are going to type in this code. And I'll give you a few minutes, and you'll see what happens. Jim, thank you. We're going to participate in a demonstration. Oh, yes, this is all technology. And again, this is a free, F-R-E-E. -E, this is a free tool. and I'm going to wait and see who's able to join me because I'm then going to send to you a slide that will allow you to sign in. And all you have to do is sign in your name and hit that reply. Oh, Stacy, I see you. I see you. 
Pat, I see you. Life is good. Good. And who else do we have? And again, as some of you are coming on, remember, this is one of the first tools for technology where I, as the instructor, can go into a classroom and I can say to the students, bring out your mobile devices from under the tables and chairs. Bring them out. I don't care what you have. You are going to use those mobile devices, and I'm going to teach with them and watch me rock and roll. So I have Albert, Dorothy, Kristen, Tech. So watch what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to take over your device, and you should be seeing, so what is Nearpod? Now, you all should be very excited. Why? Because I'm in Michigan, and you are somewhere on the West Coast. And some of you are using your phone, your laptop, but we're communicating. And with that, I'm going to send you all a video. Do you know how long it would take in a classroom to, to bring up a video for a student? Oh, my gosh, 10 years. You would still wait for them. But some of you right now are looking at a video, and I sent that video to you. Is life not good? And when I'm ready for you to move on, I, Robbie, the instructor, can stop that video and send my next lesson straight to you and to keep you on task. You all should be going, oh, my gosh, and not that. Some of you are still buying clickers and, and having problems in, with budgets and trying to get all of that new technology. No, no, no. Ladies and gentlemen, with this free tool, you're able to do polling, questions and answers. How about drawing, quizzes, video? So to prove my point, how about a little test? I'm going to send you all very quickly a test, and you're going to see how you are able to draw, and the test is password protected. And all you have to do is circle the images that start with the letter I, or you can draw me a happy face, or you can say life is good. Whatever you do, you hit the submit or thank you, and I, as the instructor, will instantly see your work. You ought to be going, oh, my gosh. So I'm just waiting for someone to come through. Oh, and I have someone coming. Oh, oh, how about this? And if you wouldn't mind, Darcy, if I have you coming in and you circled the igloo and the ice cream and we're waiting on the others, can you all imagine this tool? And I'm just waiting for a couple of more. Uh-oh, I see Albert coming up. And Albert also has the igloo and the ice cream. We're talking on-demand assessment where I can see what you all are doing. And password protected. You can use it for writing and drawing. But because this is a time test, yes, it is. I can move you right to polling. So for those who didn't get their work in, it's time to move on because now within this tool, you have polling. So now I have to poll you all. You will now see very quickly a image of a polling coming up where you can select your best uh, place in the world. So again, with this, Right here, I can see as the instructor um, what you are clicking on, and Albert just clicked on Christ the Redeemer. It will also give me your information by person and a chart for the entire class. And again, I see you all coming in. However, this is a time test, so I'm going to share with you another feature that we ask the developer to put in, and that is when I need to take you all to the web. I don't want you all to take the time to go to the web. 
as the instructor, I just put in the web address, and I'm going to just put in Yahoo very quickly. And then all I have to do on my machine is hit go. And by the way, I'm using the iPad Mini, and I hit share. And pretty soon you all will receive the full website that is active. And again, you see how quickly I'm able to bring in the Internet, my content, on and on. And I'll give you all a few minutes because it should be loading up Yahoo! And meet the cutie who gets to kick off the Super Bowl. You all should be going, wow. Okay. So, Sue, I see it didn't work on your iPhone. I'll get to you and share with you why. Um, but again, as I'm going through this, some of you are now seeing how I can bring in the Internet at any time. And I'm going to end it because I'm going to share with you how I'm going to bring up a slideshow or a PowerPoint. So with that, given a few minutes, you will now receive my PowerPoint in which you can swipe across or up and down to look at my slides. I'll give you all a few minutes. And this is a demonstration of how we evaluate these tools and emerging technology. We have to see the value of this being a tool that I can use in the classroom to enhance teaching and learning. So now you all should have my PowerPoint, but I saved the best for last. Why? Because I'm going to ask three of you to now turn off your mobile devices as if you were in a classroom and now you're saying, you know what, I need to go and, or I need to surf the web. Because with this device, it will let me know those who are still online and those who have turned me off. Yes, this is one of the first tools that I can track students. So I see that Albert, Christian, Maria, oh, nope, he just got offline. Albert turned me off. Jeannie, Christian, Stacy. In other words, all throughout the presentation, I can share with you, and it gives me analytics of all of those who are online, offline, if you jump back on and jump in. So again, everyone, I'll bring you back to my Blackboard uh, presentation to say, now you know what we do. Here's the information because, again, this is a free tool. As an instructor, you would just go to the website sign on, they'll give you a number, et cetera, and then you can use this in your classroom with your students regardless of the device they bring into class. I also have for you in terms of resources um, documentation. How about some data? How about, come on, Rob, you sh you're sharing all of these tools and gadgets, but do you have any feedback in terms of the classroom? And yes, I do. On behalf of Walter State Community College, one of our pilot mobile colleges, I have a link for you to go to their website where you can actually see what they're doing with these emerging technology tools, how they're teaching with it, what apps they're using for the natural sciences, for biology, chemistry, physics, how they're using their iPad to test over 200 students at the same time with a lockdown app, and actual teaching. So I have this site for you that you can go on at any time. Once a month, they'll have live classroom demonstration with some of these tools. I also have for you on the FDA approval for all of these devices and how we use our rubric for standards of quality. And I have for you a mobile health center. I'm going to take you there now. And 
you will see what I now have prepared for you, and then we'll have some questions and answers. And I want um, you to join me in celebrating that I was able to go to or through over 80 slides within 40 minutes. And I'm sure Sue is laughing. So with this Mobile Health Resource Center, which I thought I could just click right into, I'm going to have to bring it up on the web, and now you'll see what I have for you. And if you would put your question in the chat, I will have to help me with that as I bring up your resource center. So I'm going to go to the URL, and I think it's www.mobilehealthsciences.weebly. Com. And hopefully I'm successful in bringing that up. And yes, I am. Ladies and gentlemen, this is another teachable moment for you. I'm presenting to you a website of resources that I created with a free tool called Weebly. Weebly allows educators, students to create beautiful um, websites that are interactive with links and embedded videos. But for you, I created this for you, calling M Teaching, M Learning, Mobilization of Health Sciences. And you will see I have additional information regarding apps for allied and health nursing. I'm scrolling down on your 10 iPhone apps for nursing, uh, applications, how about 100 plus nursing apps, health apps. And you see, I have embedded video um, regarding um, various tools for healthcare, Web 2.0. By the way, all of these are free tools for you all for allied sciences, et cetera. And you see, you even, um, and I'm scrolling down, you can put in um, polls, clickers. Um, do you use Web 2.0 and have that? I'm going to scroll up scroll up very quickly. I have for you um, mobile use for, and I have all of your information about how students are using mobile devices with all of your charts and research. And I have for you all your Web 2.0 tools. These are all free tools all ready for you. And again, I have over 50 plus resources. In the resource column, I have um, 100 best ways for educators, healthcare, et cetera. And you see on and on and on. And Mobile App Center. Again, I have you some outstanding apps for you in the center. Um, it's coming up. Give it a few minutes. And here we go. And I try to get you healthcare and natural sciences on and on. And you see all of your apps. I think I have maybe 300 plus apps for you. I also have your 10 predictions of what's up and coming in your area, along with a blog for your healthcare and technology. And yes, I have more. Yes, I do have more. I have your media format, how to use YouTube, and all of that good stuff. All to say, yes, Sue, it's 254, and I made it. I got you to the Health Care Center. And by the way, this is all online, free for you all. Plus, I have a copy of the presentation that you can download, and you're welcome to use all of the information because life is good. Thank you. So do we have any questions? I have one. 
Robbie, I've been looking over the chat area and I have not seen any uh, to bring forward. But one of the things, I mean, these are phenomenal resources. And I know that probably a lot of the questions that may come up um, in their minds after the presentation will be addressed in your resource center that you've developed. And yes, we will be posting the links for this material as well as her slide share, the presentation she did today. So you'll have all of that information after the fact, after this webinar is over. Um, but a question that I have is, um, tell me what you see the implications to curriculum development are in the allied health field due to all these emerging technologies you talked about today. Well, very good. Thank you for that question because we're working with the publishers, Elsevier, Pearson, McGraw-Hill, and bringing a new level of content in terms of more interaction, more engagement, uh, where we can have uh, what I call real-time information coming even out of our textbook. So with that, um, it's going to be a major change in how they produce textbooks, but I'm looking for what I call the perfect match of our educators, our healthcare people working with the publishers with emerging technology. Um, let me just say it in another way. We have to bring in interaction into the curriculum and content. We have to. If not, we're going to miss out some amazing opportunities to improve teaching and learning. All right, great. And one other kind of reflection that I'm seeing in all of these devices is, as an example, in the allied health field, of course, today, um, nurse aides, nurses, doctors, et cetera, rely on the existing tools. Let's, let's say stethoscope as an example. It, it seems like tomorrow not only will they need to have learned those skills through their education in using those things, but also being able to use the new devices, and probably they will replace the old ones. Um, so being able to use those devices and then also the data that is generated from them is in, in my mind as I, as I see these technologies, um, they will be the caregivers that analyze the data to provide the, the care to the patient. And so learning in education how to collect the data, how to review the data, how to analyze it and prescribe from it will be a critical component in the educational piece. Is that what do you think in relationship to those reflections? I, I think you said it best, um, Sue, because again, um, we, and I'll just say as educators have been busy trying to provide the education and the care. Now with these smart tools coming and it's sending us information and data, we have to learn how to analyze, evaluate, and be ready to provide what I call on-demand changes. And I say that very quickly because if you're working with a patient and that patient is wearing smart shoes, but the shoes are letting all of us know that the patient really isn't walking or doing the therapy, et cetera, then we know that we're going to look at that data and right away say, hello you need to start moving more, walking more. So it, yeah, it's going to take a new dynamics in our knowledge of research and evaluation. Perfect. Thanks so much. Um, are there any other questions? We are one minute to wrap up. So I just wanted to provide others with that last opportunity to post a question or post a comment uh, before we close the session out for the day. And um, I also am going to input into the chat area um, a feedback form. And I would encourage all of you to go ahead and go out to the SurveyMonkey link that I've just provided here. 
And um, please provide your feedback on today's session. We always appreciate the um, information as we move forward with these webinars. So any last minute posts or questions? I'm looking in the chat room now. And thank, thank you all. Perfect. I think we have a few comments coming in, Robbie. So I think they will probably be saying thank you very much. Would it be possible to have exactly. your email address, please? Robbie, could oh, you yes. put your email address down, please? And if thank you're ever you. interested in, oh, thank you, in testing some of these apps and devices, just drop me an email to let me know. Sounds awesome. Well, thank you so much, Robbie, for being here today. I know that um, you've provided us some very compelling information and some real knowledge on what's heading down the, the path for tomorrow in relationship to health education. So thank you very much. With that, we will close out the session. So I am going to stop the recording of the session. Thank you so much.